Okay, guys, so for Bible this week, we're going to take a small break from studying about Paul's life. And because Easter is coming up, we want to take a good close look at what Jesus did for us and what the meaning of Easter is, which is the death of Jesus for our sins and his wonderful resurrection that allows us to have eternal life with him. So let's pray. God, I just ask that you'll be with us as we uh, study this scripture. Help my mo mind to be focused and um, the kids too. And Lord, even though these are scriptures we've looked at, it's a story we've heard. God, I pray that you'll give us fresh understanding and that you would um, open up your word to us so that we can see and know and understand. And Lord, I just um, thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for the sacrifice you made for us so that we could live eternally with you. And we're so very grateful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do today for our Bible workbook page, we're going to use that as um, a way to take notes on all of these scriptures that we're going to be reading. So we're going to be talking about some of the events that led up to Jesus' death on the cross. And um, so we are going to be looking at page 113 in our Bible workbooks, okay? And so, like I said, we're going to use this as notes. Um, one of the things that the Bible workbook wanted us to do was put these events in order, but I'm going to be going through the scriptures with you in order, so I'll be telling you how to put them in order, but we're going to be looking at all four of these scriptures. Actually, there's going to be a fifth one as well. And so, and then you'll do this part on your own. John 3, 16 has been a memory verse and it's one that we all should know. So you can do this part on your own. We'll do the notes together. So we'll take a look at the scripture together. We'll talk about it. And then you can pause it while you put your notes in here. You can draw pictures if you wish. If you wanna just write some words, you don't have to copy the verses, just some ideas to help you remember what the scripture was about, okay? All right, so another thing I like to use is my resurrection eggs. This is a, a way I like to tell the Easter story. And usually when we're in class together, each each student gets an egg and we see what the symbol is. But we're going to have to do it this way this year. But um, just know that I miss you guys. I wish you were all right here in my living room so that we could um, study this together. Okay, so guys... The first scripture we're going to look at is this purple square, the one down in the, the, the corner down here. We're going to look at John 12, 12 through 19. So let's turn to that. That's page 1193, John 12. Again, it's page 1193, John chapter 12, verse 12. So pause me if you don't have it yet so that you are there when I start reading, okay? Okay, so let me give you a little bit of background. This takes place a short time after Lazarus was raised from the dead, when Jesus rose uh, Lazarus from the dead. And it happens just a few days before Jesus was going to die on the cross for us. And um, Jesus was really famous for doing that really wonderful miracle for Lazarus. Um, and people were astounded that he could raise someone from the dead. But remember, the Jewish leaders were so upset. They were thinking, now what are we going to do? That's a major miracle. Everybody's going to be following him. We've got to do something. And remember, they wanted to get Jesus out of there. They were so threatened by him. And they did not know or did not believe that he was the Son of God. So their plan was to, to kill Jesus kill Lazarus too so that there wouldn't be any witness to this wonderful resurrection miracle. Okay, so just a few days um, before Jesus dies on the cross, it is a Jewish holiday called the Passover. And if you remember studying about the Israelites when they were slaves in Egypt, the night that God was going to rescue them, it was going to be the last plague that was coming. And that last plague was the angel of death coming through all of Egypt and taking the firstborn son, uh, the firstborn. And so um, what God told his people to do is take that Passover lamb and put the blood over the door. And when the angel of death saw the blood over the door, then um, he would, the angel of death would pass over and not harm that house. And boys and girls, Passover is what the Israelites celebrated for hundreds and hundreds of years. 
and Jesus was going to pa to celebrate Passover too. The cool thing is, is that Jesus was that Passover lamb because he shed his blood for us. We have the angel of death pass by us and we've got that eternal life because of Jesus's blood that's painted on our lives. And that's pretty incredible. Okay, so let's look um, John chapter 12, verse 12. Okay, so the next day, a great multitude that had come, that had come to the feast, Jerusalem's full of people ready to celebrate the Passover. Um, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took, open our first egg here. First egg's not opening easily. So uh, they were waving palm branches, okay? So the palm branches were something that the people were waving. They were so excited that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Now, they knew Jesus was pretty special, and they knew that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. But you know what, guys? They thought that he was going to save them from the Romans. They thought he was coming to be a physical king. But remember, Jesus had a far greater plan. He was coming to be the spiritual king. He was coming to set them not free from the Romans. The Romans were always going to be in power, and Jesus knew that. But Jesus knew that there was a bigger problem, and that was sin in all of our lives. And so he was coming to be that spiritual king that would get rid of sin and bring us eternal life instead. So, But the people were still very excited that Jesus was coming, and so they were waving palm branches, okay? And they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And then verse 14, there's a symbol that has to do with that. Verse 14, Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written. And then boys and girls, in verse 15, this is prophecy. This is the same verse that's in Zechariah 9.9 9, that says, Fear not, daughter of Zion, that means Israel. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. So here comes Jesus riding a donkey, just like Zechariah through God pro prophesied hundreds of years ago. And the people are cheering and shouting and crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're celebrating the king that is coming. Okay, so um, verse 16, his disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these things that were written about him and that they had done these things to him. So the disciples are just like, whoa, this is amazing. All these people are waving palm branches. And in some of the other gospels, it says people were laying their, their coats down for him to ride over. And it was a huge parade, a huge celebration, and people were rejoicing. And the, the disciples... They just thought, well, this is really cool, but they didn't understand. They didn't understand what was going on. They didn't understand the prophecies. But what this verse is telling us is that later on, the Holy Spirit gave them um, that information and helped them have that understanding. Okay, so uh, verses 17 through 19. Therefore, the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. So all the people that had seen Lazarus rise from the dead, they are there. They're so excited. And verse 18, for this reason, the people also met him because they had heard what that he had done this sign. So other people are like, I heard about that miracle. I'm going to come and see Jesus ride into Jerusalem. So we've got all these excited people. But then verse 19, we've got the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. So the Pharisees are like, We have got to do something about this Jesus. All these people are coming out and praising him. We've got to stop this. Okay, so let's go now to Matthew 26, 14. So we're going to go to this blue square right here. Okay, Matthew 26. And I will tell you the page number. It is page number 1087, 1087, Matthew 26, 14 through 16. Pause me till you find it, okay? Okay, so I'm going to open my next egg here, okay? So let's see if you can guess what this is all about. So I've got some silver coins, right? All right, so this has to do with a sad part of our account. Okay, of this week that Jesus was going through. So let's look at verse 17. Okay, chapter 26, verse 17. 
Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, oops, I'm sorry. Let's go to verse 14. So sorry. Chapter 26, verse 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him thirty pieces of silver. And so from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Now, boys and girls, I don't know what got into Judas's mind, except that he was tempted to do this and he followed through. But he was willing to go to the Pharisees who wanted to kill Jesus and say, hey, I'll help you with this. If you give me money, I'll let you know when the best time to get Jesus is. I'll give you signals. So you give me money, and I'll let you know when is the best time to come and get Jesus to, to arrest him and kill him. So he was willing to turn his back on Jesus to betray him. That is a sad part of our story. Okay, so let's go on to verse 26. All right, so... The disciples are eating a, a dinner with Jesus and he took some bread and broke it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. So he had bread that it was representing the body that he was going to give for all of us, the disciples and everyone in the world. He was offering his body for a sacrifice for the sins. And he was, uh, he also took, in verse 27, he took a cup, and the cup was of wine, and he said, um, Drink it from all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. Now, boys and girls, the old covenant was um, the commandments that God gave the Israelites long ago through Moses, and they didn't hold up their end of the covenant. The covenant was an agreement between God and his people, and he said, You will live with me, and you'll have so many blessings if you obey me. And they said, yeah, we'll do that. But we know that they did not keep the commandments. The whole Old Testament is full of evidence that they did not keep God's covenant. And God was very patient with the people. But now he is setting up a new covenant. And Jesus is this new covenant. He's going to shed his blood for um for paying for our sins, and that was this new covenant. And he said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until that day I drink it with you, uh, drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And so he's saying, Hey, this, this uh, represents my blood. It wasn't his blood in the cup, it was representing his blood, meaning his death. And he was saying, we'll all be together having a feast in my kingdom once, once um, everybody comes um, to heaven with me. We're going to drink this together. And so this was telling us that he was going to die for our sins. And that was going to be the new covenant where instead of the commandments that Moses had, we would believe that Jesus died and rose, died for our sins and rose again. And that's the new covenant is believing. And that's what we see in John 3.16 also. Okay, so let's move on to our next scripture. So you can write, uh, that was both Matthew 26.14. That was Judas betraying Jesus with the silver coins. You might want to draw, um, you could say 30 pieces of silver. You could write 30 coins. You could write Judas betrays Jesus. Any of those things would be great for those notes, and you can pause me till you get that all written or drawn down. Okay, and then we went to Matthew twenty six thirty, and that was the bread and the cup that Jesus used to represent that he was going to die for the people. So you could draw a cup and a loaf of bread. That would that would work out well. Okay. All right, so pause until you're ready, and then we're going to move on to the next scripture, which is John 17, verses 1 through 5, and that's page 1199, John 17, 1 through 5. Okay, so shortly after the dinner, uh, Jesus went to the garden to pray, and so in our hands, we are in our egg, we have some praying hands to remind us that Jesus prayed. Now, boys and girls, his prayer 
Well, let's take a look at it in verses 1 through 5. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. He knows that any minute now he's going to be arrested, and he's going to, within a short time, die on the cross and experience the sin that we committed. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself and with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So boys and girls, what Jesus was doing, he was praying. And you know what? It wasn't about him. It was about his Father being glorified. He just wanted to please God, his Father. He wanted to go through with this sacrifice of his life so that his Father would be glorified. But we also see that he came, um, that he said that you should give eternal, eternal life to as many as you have given him. So remember that his prayer was to glorify God, but it was also so that all of us would believe. He was praying for all those who would believe. He wasn't praying about himself. Isn't that amazing? So then we look, um, if you look, we're not going to do this today, but if you want to look at how Jesus prayed for all of us, you can look down in verses 20 through through 26, chapter 17, 20 through 26. If you want to see how Jesus prayed for you and me, you can see that in that, in that chapter. Okay, so then, um, so that would be um, the green square, and you can write Jesus praying, you could draw some praying hands, you could say glorify the Father, bring people to believe. Those would be some notes that you could put here. Okay, so for our fifth event... We don't have notes for that, but we're going to take a look at it in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, verse 43. Okay, and so this, this took place in the garden after Jesus was praying, and you can see in this egg, I've got some rope. Okay. All right, so let's look at verse 43. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the, scri with, from the, chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And verse 44, Now his betrayer had given him a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. Now, boys and girls, back in those days, um, it kind of give, a, instead of a handshake, they'd give a kiss on the cheek. You've probably seen that in movies and things like that. But that's what um, what Judas told all those soldiers and everybody that was coming with him. The one I kiss is the one you want to um, arrest. And so uh, let's continue in verse 45. And as soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him, meaning Jesus, and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, which means teacher, and kissed him. And then they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. We talked about this the other day when we were talking about Peter. And then Jesus answered and said, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But the scripture must be fulfilled. And then they all forsook him and fled. And we know that... Um, Jesus did heal the man who had his ear kept, cut off. Remember, we, we, we read about that as well. So, um, so Jesus was arrested. He was betrayed by his friend Judas, and he was arrested. And now he was going to have an unfair trial and die for us. But boys and girls, he had in his mind the goal all along was to bring all of us across that, that barrier that was keeping us from having a relationship with him. And he was paying that price. The sin that separates us from God, he was going to get rid of. So all we have to do is believe and we could have that relationship with him. So boys and girls, we're going to stop there for today. And then um, we'll continue 
with Jesus' death on the cross tomorrow. Okay, so um, I want you just to finish the rest of that worksheet doing number one with John 3.16. Take a look at that, okay? All right, let's, let's pray, guys. Lord, I just thank you for what you've done for us. Um, Lord, the sin that separates us from you, you took care of by giving us your life, by putting your life down and dying on the cross for us and paying the price of our sins so that we could have eternal life with you. So, Lord, we thank you for that. And, Lord, I just want to pray for any boys and girls who um, are just having a sudden realization today of what you've done, Lord, that they would just put their faith in you, that they would say, they would confess with their mouth that, yes, I am a sinner and I need you, Jesus. And I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and that you rose again so I could have eternal life with you. Lord, just help them to pray um, that sort of prayer, Lord, so that they would be counted as um, believers and that they would have eternal life with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.